This past week in wrestling headlines, we gained an insight into what Gable Stevenson has been up to and possibly what's next for him. In this ESPN article, it says Gable Stevenson is training full-time at the WWE after a heart procedure. And when I read this article for the first time, my heart dropped. I was like, what is going on with Gable Stevenson? Is he okay? Why is he getting this heart procedure right now? Well, it turns out last year, right before the Tokyo Olympics, he found out that he had this syndrome called Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome, WPW, that he may have had since he was born. Now, when he discovered it, he had talked to top cardiologists as well as the recommendations of the WWE and decided to wait on getting a procedure done. Well, he had that procedure last month after winning an Olympic gold medal, after winning a national title. And now he is training with the WWE. So there were some other interesting insights from this article. And it appears that Gable Stevenson is okay. I mean, he's back to full training, at least full training in Florida. So you heard that right. That's not training in Minnesota. He's training in Florida. And the interesting thing I thought here or found out was that the WWE had actually set up this remote training center for Gable while he got this procedure done in Florida. From that time, Gable has just been training and training and training, and it's been like, what is going on with Gable? There were some rumors going around. There was an article that came out uh, just a couple like a few weeks ago in September that said details on Gable Stevenson's lack of progression in the WWE, and people were wondering, why isn't Gable progressing more in the WWE? Should he be more ahead than he is right now well we kind of figured out why it's because he had this procedure done he had to undergo that and then get back into training and from that we also learned like is he going to be returning to college wrestling and that's the biggest takeaway i want you to look at here is that gable Stevenson in this article said he's 100 percent committed to becoming the next big thing in WWE, a lifelong dream that he's now ready to realize. So not only has he been training full-time WWE, but he's 100% committed to it. I don't think we're going to see Gable Stevenson return this year. Now that all these details are kind of coming out about what's been going on with him, uh, and, and so I, I wish him best luck uh, as he goes on into the WWE. He still has that eligibility, but I don't think we're going to see him now. I think that's kind of our official answer from ESPN. But whether he returns or not, the college wrestling season is here. And that's what I'm so excited about because October 10th, marks officially the first day of NCAA practices and the official NCAA wrestling season. There's already been practices going on as well as some wrestle-offs. I actually attended the Campbell wrestle-off over the weekend. They had this awesome new mat, and that's actually the question of the week that I have for you is, what what team has the best wrestling mat? Is it Campbell? Is, is, is it this new mat? Is it Virginia Tech? Is it Penn State? Who do you think has the best mat in the entire NCAA? Make sure you leave a comment down below to let me know. I have a little bit of bias here having helped design this wrestling mat for Campbell when I was working there last year. So I think it's awesome. I love the octagon style. But nonetheless, the wrestling season is here. And there's been a lot of happenings over the past week in these wrestling headlines with overall recruits some top overall recruits committing including Mark Anthony McGowan who committed to Princeton this was a big get for Princeton who at one time was the number three overall recruit out of the 2023 recruiting class he has since dropped with his loss at the who's number one event but he's still top five at his weight he's a, a lightweight from Blair Academy and man he's going to be tough to be trifled with and I'm sure that with the success of Princeton last year, with with Quincy Monday making the national finals and uh, and Pat Glory making the national finals and what they're going to do this year, I think that probably had some excitement and insights into why he wanted to go there. I think another big guy that committed this past week you may not have seen, or maybe you did, was A.J. Heeg, who committed to Oklahoma State. Originally, he was committed to Oklahoma. Now, he is an Oklahoma native, and I think that's what the interesting thing here is that what he said is, I'd like to thank all my coaches that reach out to me since he reopened his recruitment process. And that's the thing we have to remember, right, folks, is that these are high school kids. Things can change. 
one week he likes Oklahoma, next week he likes Oklahoma State. That's just kind of what happens. I know there's more to it than that, but they're high school kids, and things can change. They're not committed, man, until it's their first, they're walking on campus, walking onto the mat, and then it's like, all right, they're here. We got them. It's just some crazy stuff can happen, and I understand that. But he is also a top overall recruit. He's number five in the 182-pound weight class. And then there's another bigger guy who just recently committed. That's Camden McDaniel, uh, from, who committed to Nebraska. He had been looking at schools such as Ohio State and Purdue. He is an Ohio native and a 195-pounder. This is a big get for Nebraska, who's just bringing in top recruit after top recruit and with their success you talk about Princeton's success talk about Oklahoma State's overall success and Nebraska's success it just keeps bringing in and breeding new recruits which I love to see now one guy who wasn't actually necessarily a big recruit at the time but ended up making the Hall of Fame over the weekend was Anthony Robles he was the one-legged wrestler of Arizona State who now is in the Arizona State Hall of Fame he was honored at halftime and I think this was definitely something that was well deserved and it's not going to be his last Hall of Fame that he is inducted into he was born with one leg and made it to the national finals beating Matt McDonough of Iowa and that was I believe 10 years ago which to me is just crazy I don't know if it seems like it's it's longer ago than that but it was just like 10 years ago 2011 I believe is when the national finals were but just an incredible accomplishment that he had I actually did a whole background video on this channel but since that time Anthony Robles has been just breaking world trying to break world records pull up world records like within 24 hours I know he didn't necessarily live up to that this year I think he got injured like through some way through the challenge, which is unfortunate, but it's just awesome to see wrestlers doing these big things, being inducted. He said, I'm so blessed. I'm honestly living a dream right now. And you love hearing things like that because with Robles and with Arizona State, they just recently released their schedule in the past week. I believe we talked about it on last week's wrestling headlines, but not only did Arizona State release their schedule, but we had a couple other schedules released with Cal Poly finally releasing their schedule, some Pac-12 teams, including Stanford. Stanford released their schedule, and one thing to look at here that I think is really fun is that they're going to have Rutgers at home. Rutgers is coming from New Jersey all the way out to California. Virginia Tech also traveling coast to coast to get out to Stanford, and those two duels in, in themselves will be very, very good. Stanford's going to the scuffle again, and then Arizona State is going to be a phenomenal duel, as it usually is, and ending the season with the Pac-12 championships, but those are some of the big ones. I'm also looking forward to Stanford going out to Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. I think we'll get some pretty good matches there. And of course, finally, after all this time, Penn State finally released their schedule. This is something we've been waiting on. I had like projected what their schedule would look like. I was pretty darn spot on. But they're opening the season. Just some insights and my thoughts on this schedule is they're opening the season with Lock Haven at home which will be a fun one. Pennsylvania match up there on November 11th. Lehigh, they're traveling to Lehigh. And I, I love seeing all these Pennsylvania matchups. I, what I would really love to see, and that actually hasn't happened since, I believe I was in college, and I had to miss the dang match, but it was Pitt and Penn State. I'd love to see that matchup. But they're going to they're having Oregon State at the, at, they're hosting them at Rec Hall. The collegiate duels, on December 19th and 20th, then they get into their Big Ten schedule on in January with Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, the big duel on January 27th. They're traveling to Ohio State, and then they're going to end this season with Clarion on February 19th. Of course, that's before the Big Ten championships and the NCAA championships in the postseason. How does this schedule look? Well, I think Penn State can definitely have another undefeated season. There's no, like, really, really tough duels I think they're going to have outside of like Iowa and Ohio State I, I, I don't know that Michigan can really compete with them this year and, and the outside of the Big Ten it's going to be even tougher for teams to compete with them just looking at their schedule but we're going to get some tough fun matchups from them this week I'm releasing my 184 pound preview where you'll get an inside look at Aaron Brooks but to check out my most recent weight by weight preview you check out this video at 174 pounds and the three options to win, Carter Sirachi, Makai Lewis, or someone else. You're going to have to watch the video to find out. Those have been your wrestling headlines.